Bienvenidos. Welcome to the Learn Spanish con Salsa Podcast, the show for Spanish learners that love music, travel, and culture. Close your grammar textbooks, shut down the language apps, and open your ears to how Spanish is spoken in the real world. Let us show you how to go from beginner to bilingual. Here is your host, certified language coach, Tamara Marie. Hola y bienvenidos. Welcome to episode two of the Learn Spanish con Salsa podcast. So today we're going to talk about Spanish from the Dominican Republic. So if any of you have met anyone from the Dominican Republic or you have friends from the island, you will know that the Spanish that's spoken in the Dominican Republic is just a little bit different than what you may have been taught in school or what you've learned with an, an app that you may have downloaded. So today I have a member of the team of Spanish Con Salsa. I'm here with Kesia. And we're going to talk a little bit about Dominican Spanish in general, like what is Dominican Spanish, what makes it so different. And we're going to talk a little bit about some of the specific things about Dominican Spanish that really are a little bit unique. So make sure that you're ready and that you listen up because today is going to be a very interesting conversation. So just a little heads up before we get started. The introduction to the conversation in this episode will be 100% in Spanish. And that's to give you some more exposure to listening to Spanish conversation. So if you're an intermediate learner, challenge yourself to listen and see how much you understand. Now, if you are a beginner and you find it a little challenging to follow the conversation at the beginning, not to worry, we will switch back to English once we get to the more detailed conversation about Dominican Spanish. But you can access the full transcript plus the translation to English by going to our show notes page at learnspanishconsalsa.com forward slash Dominican Spanish. That's learnspanishconsalsa.com forward slash Dominican Spanish. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. Now I'm going to introduce you all to Kesia. Hola, ¿cómo estás? Hola, muy bien. <laughs> ¿Y tú? Bien, bien. Entonces, Kesia, ¿de dónde tú eres? Soy de República Dominicana, de la región del Cibao. Ah. Específicamente vivo en la ciudad de La Vega. Ah, de La Vega. Ah, entonces, estás en el norte del país, ¿verdad? Exacto, sí. ¿Y cuánto tiempo llevas estudiando inglés? Porque yo sé que tú eres bilingüe y tenemos oyentes que quieren ser bilingües también. Entonces, yo quiero saber un poquito de ti y cómo tú aprendiste inglés en tu país. Pues aprendí inglés cuando era joven. Bueno, soy joven todavía, pero <ríe> cuando sí, tenía como... Somos jóvenes. Sí, sí. Tenía 14, 15 años. Fui a un instituto de idiomas aquí. Iba todos los sábados en la tarde a aprender inglés. Pero después que me gradué, eh, pasaron dos años y cuando me gradué no me sentía con la confianza de hablarlo. Ah, okay. Sabía mucho del libro, gramática, mm -hmm. pero a la hora de hablar tenía mucha vergüenza. Entonces fue con amigos uh, practicando y hablando con ellos que llegué a alcanzar la fluidez o un poco de la fluidez que tengo <ríe> actualmente. Sí, hay muchos turistas y amigos de otros países que viven aquí y ellos mm -hmm. me, me han ayudado mucho a mejorar. Qué bueno, entonces con, con tus amigos podías practicar más el inglés. Sí. Yo sé que todos estamos en el proceso de aprender otro idioma. Yo estoy aprendiendo inglés o español, otro idioma, e, y puedo llegar a fluidez. O es como un proceso, es como algo que tenemos que hacer cada día. Entonces, uh -huh. hubo un momento en que te sentías como, ay, por fin, yo soy bilingüe. ¿Hubo un momento específico que recuerdas o, o solo fue un proceso? Creo que fue un proceso. Uh, como te dije, cuando me gradué, cuando terminé de estudiar, todos pensaban, oh, ya ella puede hablar inglés porque terminó dos años de estudios del idioma, pero no era así. Sí. Tenía el conocimiento, pero no tenía la práctica. Uh -huh. Y luego, a medida que comienzas a hablar y a usarlo, eh, te das cuenta cuáles son tus fortalezas o debilidades y vas mejorando. Y creo que lo que te da la satisfacción es poder comunicarte con otra persona 
que habla el idioma y uh -huh. que solo habla ese idioma, no puedes traducir, no hay otra manera de comunicarte con él. Sí. Eso te da mucha satisfacción y te hace sentir como, oh, sí, en verdad hablo inglés, en verdad puedo hablar sí. <ríe> y me entienden y puedo comunicarme. Pero creo que es un proceso, nunca dejas de aprender, nunca, o sea, actualmente todavía estoy aprendiendo palabras nuevas y cosas nuevas, eh, como cualquier idioma, hay mucho espacio y oportunidad para aprender. Exacto. La verdad es que eh, me sentía igual con el inglés, porque hay muchas palabras en inglés que aún no sé también. Y, y también con la gramática, porque con inglés es muy difícil la gramática. Entonces, sí, yo creo que eso de verdad es como todos tenemos que continuar aprendiendo cada día. Entonces, uh -huh. bueno, yo creo que eso va a ayudar a los oyentes que están pensando que, ay, nunca voy a lograr esa meta de ser bilingüe. Entonces, creo que eso va a ayudarlos un poquito. Entonces, gracias por eso. Porque tenemos muchos principiantes, ahora vamos a cambiar al inglés para la conversación sobre español dominicano. Okay, so we're going to switch to English now. I know a lot of you are beginners. We will have the whole conversation for today in the show notes. So there will be a transcript with the translation to English. So if you didn't catch all the conversation just a minute ago, make sure you go to the show notes and check out the transcript. But for now, we're going to switch to talk about Dominican Spanish and Kesia because she's from the northern region of the country, which I have to say the Cibao, like the accent in that region is very particular. And if you listen to any bachata music, a lot of the artists that are well known actually come from that region. So usually what we think of when we yes. think of like the Dominican accent is usually El Cibao, right? Yes, yes, definitely. It's very campo-ish, like we say here. Yeah. <laughs> and El Campo and, is like the countryside, right? We would say in English, like the country, like <laughs> people that live kind of yes. outside of the city, country bumpkins, however you want to call it. But yeah, so in the Cibao region, there's a lot of people who live more in more of like a rural area, right? Yes. And it's funny because... Like you can be from the south or the east of the country and you might not be able to tell by the way people talk. Mm -hmm. But if you see a Cibaeño, mm -hmm. you, you'll notice immediately that, that this person is from the Cibao because our language and accent and dialect, it's pretty different from the rest of the country. <laughs> so what are those characteristics? Well, first, before we get into that, let's kind of talk about what are the different regions, right? Because we talked about El Cibao, which is more towards the north. And you mentioned yes. there's also the south and the east as well. Yes. So the east is very famous for the tourism. Mm -hmm. It's where Punta Cana is. I think everyone knows where Punta Cana is. People, yeah, definitely. People <laughs> say, oh, I've been to Punta Cana, but I've never been to Dominican Republic. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> yeah, I call it Little America. Yeah, that's what I call it. <laughs> yeah, it's beautiful. Beaches are beautiful in this area. And yes, yeah, so you have the east and then you have the south of the country. It's a different territory. It's very poor, based on farming, basically. And it has beautiful beaches and areas as well, but it's not a tourist area. So mm -hmm. it's like a virgin area of the country. Okay. Is Santo Domingo, the capital, is that considered part of El Sur or the South? Or is that sort of like its own region in and of itself, just because it's the capital? So technically, it is part of the South, mm -hmm. but lately, um, people doesn't really refer to it as part of the South. Like, it's its own thing. Like you okay. said, the capital, Santo Domingo. So there's three main regions in the Dominican Republic. And I think what we'll do first is let's talk a little bit about some of the characteristics of the accent of Dominican Spanish. Because what a lot of people tell me is that Wow, when I hear someone speaking Spanish and they're from the Dominican Republic, they talk so fast and I have no idea what they're saying. <laughs> so let's kind of break down a little bit about why that is exactly. And then we'll kind of get into the differences in the different regions, because there's also accents that are different within the country, not just this sort of one generic Dominican accent. Like you said, people from El Cibao have a very unique sound as well. So but let's first talk about what are those characteristics of just Dominican Spanish in general that all Dominicans sort of share? Yes, we do speak 
very fast. And I didn't notice this until somebody else bring it up to me like, oh, Cassia, slow down. <laughs> but then I noticed my family and everyone else does. It's like we're singing, you know, it's like yeah, we're yeah. going through <laughs> merengue typico, but it's just a conversation. <laughs> and we also speak very loud. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're normally loud. It's like if we're trying to yell for no reasons. I guess it's because it's an island and people used to work in the farms and yeah, you, communication is difficult here. So you're just used to it. And, and that's what you learn at home. And, you know, your abuela, your grandma's yelling to uh-huh. you and that's what you learn. And yeah, but we're loud and fast. And you know, it's funny, I think it's probably because being from the U.S., I grew up black in the U.S., which to me is sort of its own subculture. And I never really noticed that about Dominican Spanish because I think we're the same way here. <laughs> like we're the ones in the restaurant and everyone's <laughs> like, OK, they need to stay on the table in the back because they're the loud ones. So I never noticed that particular point until yeah. I started to learn more because I'm like, oh, for me, that's normal. <laughs> right. But some of the things <laughs> I did notice when I started listening to more bachata and even some salsa, too, because I think this is sort of characteristic of the whole Caribbean. But I did notice like this tendency yes drop the letter D when it's in between two vowels. So like hearing like the word cansado, it would kind of sound like cansao. Mm-hmm. Right? So I, it always sounds like someone's yes. going, ow, like I hurt my toe, like ow. <laughs> but um, mm-hmm. yes. that's just kind of how it goes. So can you kind of explain that? Is that something that's typical of everyone in the Dominican Republic? Yes, it is. That's something that everyone does. It doesn't matter the region that you come from. We drop the letter D. So... Like if you want to say mad, the word for mad in Spanish is enojado, but we would say enojado. It's just a way of saying things faster, I guess. But in some cases, you also have like the feminine form of the word, right? So it's not just cansado. You can also have, if I'm a female, I wouldn't say cansado. I would say cansada. So would that also, mm-hmm. would the D also drop out of that type of word? Like if I said, estoy cansada. We will say estoy cansa. Cansa. Yeah, it depends if the last, so let's say the last two syllables are the same vowels, then you would drop the last vowel as well. Okay, so it just sounds like that one. But it doesn't matter if it's masculine or feminine, yes, we drop the letter D. And I guess that that would be confusing, right, if I'm hearing that and I've never heard it before, especially with some connected speech, like not just hearing the word in isolation, it could be a little difficult to pick up on that. And I think that's one of the reasons why people perceive that Dominicans speak faster, because honestly, I think Spaniards also speak pretty fast. I went to Panama yes. and they also speak pretty fast. I think a lot of people speak fast, like almost like it's a competition, like we speak the fastest Spanish, right? Um, but I think that yeah. when you <laughs> add that with dropping off these letters that, you know, and, and the words get shorter, that a lot of it is the shortening of the words that people don't know is happening. Mm-hmm. So they perceive it as being faster than it may really be because these words are just you know, there's syllables missing, right? There's entire letters missing. <laughs> so yes, I think yes. once I got the hang of that, it made a lot more sense to me, at least listening to people from the DR, because I say, oh, okay, they're going to say consal. So like, and I even start talking like that sometimes to the point that I've actually had people tell me or ask me like, am I from the Dominican Republic? And I'm like, well, obviously not, right? <laughs> <laughs> obviously I'm a gringa. <laughs> but um, I think it's just because I picked up some of these habits because I listened to so much of the music that... Yeah, I, I tend to maybe do some of these things as well. Okay, so mm-hmm. the E is the enemy. All right. What is another characteristic of Dominican Spanish that's true for the whole country? We also omit the letter S. So, for example, the letter D normally disappears when it's in the middle of the word, like cansado, right? Mm-hmm. But then the letter S can disappear. It doesn't matter where it is, if it's in the middle of the word or at the end of the word. So you have words like esta, and it could be eta, you know, Uh like for saying esta muchacha, like this girl will Mm -hmm. be eta muchacha. Or even the verb es, como ella es, she is, you will say ella es, and you would just use the letter e. Wow, okay. Or saying tienes, then you will say tiene. You know, so yeah, the letter S disappear in most of the words. You know, and it's really interesting too because just from a grammar perspective, if you're hearing that and you hear tiene, you might be thinking, ah, but tiene is for usted or tiene is for uh-huh. el or ella. 
but you might think it's like a grammatical error like oh they're not saying it right they're not supposed to be saying tu tiene it's tu tienes but it's just the mm-hmm. accent you know it's literally just the accent it's not necessarily grammatically incorrect but but you will exactly. notice that so just don't get confused by hearing that it's not a change in the conjugation it's just the accent the s is kind of disappear that does not apply to the s at the beginning of words because that would be really confusing right like so <laughs> i can't say uh, no yeah no no not just, at the beginning yeah you're right yeah that would be really weird like if i tried to say jose and i say yo eh <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. That would make no <laughs> sense. Okay, so just yeah. if it's in the middle or at the end, then it can just... The middle of the end of the word. And you know, something else I noticed about just Dominican Spanish in general is some of the informality of it. I found that, you know, in classes and in apps and things we learn, like this very formal, hola, como esta usted? Yo estoy bien, gracias, y usted? But like nobody <laughs> ever talks like that, right? It sounds like a robot. No. Um, <laughs> um, and I know one thing when I first, oh, I think the first time I went to DR and I was really surprised like how things sounded. Like I'm expecting people to say, ah, como estas tu? But I hear it like in a different order. It's like sometimes the tu can be put before the esta. Is that like something that's like mm-hmm. uniquely Dominican or is that just for emphasis? Like what's that about? I think it's something more Dominican, yes. We will switch the order of the words. So I will say something like, hey, como tu ta? You know, it's like the person comes first. It's something very Dominican. Yeah, and even that como tu ta is, you know, como tu estas, right? But we just talked about the S going away, <laughs> right? Oh, yeah. So it would sound <laughs> like como tu ta, como tu ta, right? But mm-hmm. it's really como estas tu, right? Mm-hmm. So it can sound a little abrupt, too. If you're not used to that, you might be thinking, why is this person talking to me so aggressively? Or like, what are they even saying? <laughs> but yeah. Um, but yeah, it's just like a normal greeting. But I think, like I said, when you combine the D disappearing, the S disappearing, kind of speaking loudly, it all comes together to sound super fast if you're not familiar with these sort of aspects of Dominican Spanish. So, so it's really interesting That's to right. kind of delve into this. With that, we're going to wrap up our conversation for this episode. Thank you so much, Cassia, for your time. This has been really insightful. And I'm hoping that anyone that's listening is really able to learn a little bit more about Dominican Spanish and why it sounds different. Hopefully it's not so much of a mystery anymore. And the next time you hear someone from the Dominican Republic, you can listen for some of these things and you'll be able to really pick up on the Dominican accent. So hopefully this has been helpful for everyone. And again, I want to thank you, Cassia, for your time. It was a pleasure. Yeah, I enjoyed it. This is not the last we will hear from her. We're going to talk a little bit more in upcoming episodes, more about Dominican Spanish, where we get more into some of the vocabulary that she mentioned about, you know, there are a lot of words that are uniquely Dominican and not just words, but also some phrases and expressions that you'll only hear in the Dominican Republic. So in future episodes, we'll get a little bit deeper into that so that you can understand some of the vocabulary from the DR as well. And don't forget to check out the show notes at learnspanishconsalsa.com forward slash Dominican Spanish, and you'll get a full transcript of this episode. Now, you might have noticed that towards the beginning of the conversation, we talked about the different regions in the Dominican Republic. We talked about El Cibao in the north. We talked about the east, which is famous for Punta Cana. And we talked about the south, which is also where the capital Santo Domingo is. Now, each one of those reasons has its own unique accent, and they can actually sound quite different. So in part two of the conversation, we really get into some more details of the differences of the accents within the country. And we give you some specific examples of how the accent sounds, depending on what region of the Dominican Republic the speaker is from. So if you want to hear part two of the conversation, go to DominicanSpanish101.com forward slash free trial that's dominican spanish 101.com forward slash free trial and i'll also link that in the show notes there you'll be able to sign up for a free trial of the dominican spanish 101 audio course and it's completely free so once you sign up for the free trial you'll be able to access the section on the dominican accent and you can hear part two of this conversation 
And it really is quite interesting. You might be surprised at how different Dominicans sound depending on what part of the country they are from. So definitely check that out at DominicanSpanish101.com forward slash free trial. And you can hear part two of today's conversation. So that brings us to the end of this episode of Learn Spanish con Salsa. It's my sincere hope that you learned something today to take you one step closer from Spanish beginner to bilingual. Hasta luego. Thank you for listening to the Learn Spanish con Salsa podcast at LearnSpanishConSalsa.com. 